Hi, this is a video uh, to cover how to set up the Pasco Capstone software for uh, the static fluids lab that you're going to be doing. So when you double click on the Pasco Capstone software, it'll open it up. Um, the sensor for this one is called a high resolution force sensor. It's blue and it has a hook on the end and it's used for measuring forces. So always go into the hardware setup right at the start and make sure that the sensor is up. If it's a blue type of sensor, it should detect it automatically. There shouldn't be any caution signs or anything. If there is a caution sign, it could be that the power is not uh, on or the plug is not all the way in or the USB cord is not all the way in. So those are things that can be checked. The data summary right here, it's for force and the machine itself is rated to be three places after the decimal okay it's probably not going to work to three places after a decimal for us because we're going to have a little bit of motion in it we're going to have a little bit of water in it and stuff so more realistically two places after the decimal is more realistic for this lab so let's shorten it up right away okay so we're going to want to have things like tables and graphs and all that of the force but the other thing I want to sneak in is just a one, two, three digits. So make your table a bit smaller, drag over a one, two, three digits and get it to measure force. Now, right now, if I press record right now, it's measuring it. Now you notice how it's either zero or very close to zero. If your force sensor has never been plugged in or started before and it's been sitting for a while, you might have a really weird, strange number. So what you want to do is look on the sensor itself and on the front, you'll see a button that says zero. And if you press it, it should set it to zero. Now, this one was already reset a couple minutes ago, so it hasn't really changed, okay? But if it was, it was different, then you'd see this be a very different number, okay? So let's, as always, just try to pin these so the tools don't disappear on you. Let's stop that right now. So the force sensor has a hook on the end, and just to let you know, right now I'm going to actually put a something on it and I'm going to hang an object. So the object is now hanging from the hook and if I hit the record right now, it's giving me a negative number. Okay, what I'm going to do right now is I'm just going to push the object so that it's swaying a little bit. So that one there is actually moving side to side so you can see sort of like the difference is just because it's moving. And if I stop it, it should steady right out. Okay, that looks good. But also you'll notice the negative. Now this force sensor records negative if it's a downward force on the sensor itself. If you're considering tension as an upward force on your object, it would make sense in that frame of reference for considering on the object for this to be positive. So to change that, you would have to go into the hardware setup go into the, for the sensor, the properties, and click on where it says change sign. Then when you go back, this is positive. It would have been totally fine to leave it negative, but it would have reversed the sign on your slope, and then you would have had to deal with that. Either way, mathematically, it's quite fine. You just have to be able to adjust for the situation, okay? So now, in this case here, I'm just going to show you what will end up happening if you actually lower something into the water, okay? So here, if I go uh, time and force and force and time, this one's still going from the previous one. Let me get rid of this one here, turn that one off. Okay, now, so I'm gonna hit start and then I'm just going to lower it into the water just so you can see what ends up happening. You can see here as you're lowering it, let me just resize this, as you're lowering it here this is where I'm moving things back and forth. And so you're getting a lot of jitter in the data. But this is where it starts hitting the top of the water and there starts to be a buoyant force. Now, because the buoyant force is in the opposite direction as the tension, it actually reduces the amount of tension in the string. But once it's all the way underneath, 
it, the maximum buoyant force is a constant, so it doesn't change things anymore. Okay, so you're going to be seeing things. The last things I want to mention is something called a delta tool. You used it before with the mechanical energy lab, but not only can you put it on a piece of data, but if you right click on that and go to where it says show delta tool, you see how it starts right here? but then it's got another box over here. You can actually move that to one of your final points, okay? Now, this will show you your change in time, how long it took. This will show you your change in force. Remember, we're measuring force, but it's from whatever point you choose here to whatever point you choose here, okay? So if I click on this box, I can actually move it from one data point to another with a with my mouse and you can see that the values change a little bit but to one two places after the decimal they're pretty consistent so if I change this one here and click on this one so this one moves you can see it's also changing by a little bit and we'll deal with that in the lab so the other things you could have done is let me just click on this and delete it you could have actually done sort of like an average of this one here turn this on so this one here the mean is 0 0.0686 or you could have found a mean over here and you could have taken those two values and done the the math separately either way it's going to give you similar results that's pretty much all I'm going to cover. There's other stuff that's in the lab, but you can pick that up in the lab. So you've learned how to set it up. You've learned how to set a table and set this up. Now, one thing about this last lab, one last part that I'll put is I'm going to create a new page to do it too. So one of the things you're going to be doing there is you're going to be creating a data set that where you have to type in values. So say you have a force measurement you're actually going to say, I'm going to create my data set. So say your data set is displaced volume. And you pick your units and you're saying my units are milliliters. Then you can click over to here and you can say create new user entered data. And for this one here, I'm going to put uh, tension and have units of newtons. So what would end up happening there is you would end up having data that you actually put in. So this could be 10, this could be 0.75, etc. Okay. And then because you've got this data set, this is now part of the data that's in the computer. So when you go over to graph, not only are is the data from the sensor there, but there's the data from your uh, table that you just put in. So if you want tension on the y-axis and displaced volume on this, you can actually have the graph of this data set that you put in. Let me just resize that. And so this would be the graph of this data. And you'll be able to do other things like the linear fits and stuff. So not only can you analyze data from the sensors, you can analyze data that you type in directly. So this is the overview for the Static Fluids Lab. Uh, have fun and enjoy the lab.